Hey guys, it's Gia from Smart Home Makers. In this video, I'm gonna show you three cool automation tips with Plex and Home Assistant. Plex is like a custom DIY Netflix that you run with your own media. If you wanna find out more about Plex, I'll leave links down in the description below. With our kids having tablets and watching Plex, or we may be working from home, we wanna know that they're not watching content that they're not supposed to be watching. So I'm gonna create my first automation here, looking for specific ratings of the actual movie. And I'm gonna create an automation that says if a rating is R, then I'm gonna be notified of it, so then I can take action. So the first thing I've done is, I've gone to the Lovelace dashboard, I've created a uh, entity card with my Plex media server. So my Plex media server is running in my NAS, and I'm using a desktop app for my Mac currently. So that's what we're gonna to use today in the automation. Just fire up a movie, any movie that you wanna try out and let's go to developer tools and let's see actually what type of information we can see from it. What attributes that you can actually use to build automations. You've got the volume level, you've got the media content type, we've got the media title, so in my case, the Joker from 2019. Um, we've got several other things, uh, a summary, so we've got a description of the movie, we've got where is the movie being played, so if you've got multiple Plex, uh, maybe on your phone, iPad, you'll see that from here. So one specific we're going to be using for our first automation is the media underscore content underscore rating. And I'm going to be looking for ratings R in specifically, but I guess you can expand this to any rating that you deem inappropriate for your own uh, kids. So now that we've got all of that information, we can jump into the automations file and create an automation. So I've created my YAML file, it's called kid underscore plex underscore rating. And in the alias, I'll put in a normal description, notify when your kid is watching an R rated movie on Plex. The platform we need to use this time is the template platform because we're looking for, we're using this function is state attribute. And what we're doing with the function is we're looking at a specific attribute of that entity. So you're gonna need three things in the brackets. In the first bracket, you need your entity ID. So my one's media player dot plex underscore Mac. You need your attribute, which is the media content rating, and the R is the value you're expecting out of it. So, so this is gonna trigger my automation. The action, very straightforward notification action, is gonna notify my mobile phone, and it's gonna give me this sort of information. So. For this notification to be a little bit more interesting, I actually want to know what movie they're playing because I want to you know, have that information. I might be okay if they are watching a movie and that even if it's rated whatever, but if I know that movie is okay or we watched it already together, then I might allow that. So we need the movie title. So here you're going to need data and it's called template. That's going to be important. And you have your message. Your message, uh, your kids are watching. This is sort of a fixed text that you can change. The first variable we're using here is a state attribute of the media title. So this section here that I'm highlighting now, this gives you the actual title. So it would be Joker 2019. And then we have on, and this is optional, but this will give you the device they're actually using. Are they using the kitchen uh, plex or the one in the living room or the one on their own tablet? You can actually put conditions so if you want to you can put a condition that this will only trigger if the device is their own device so you don't want really be notified when maybe someone else in the house an adult is actually watching a movie rated r maybe just want to um, put this on the kids device so you know you can play with different options here and remember as usual the code will be down in the description below so no need to type this out while you're watching the video. In my second automation, I'm looking at movie night routine. So whenever Plex starts playing after the sun has set, I want certain things to happen. Maybe I want my lights to turn on to a specific color or your popcorn machine to start, start up if you've got a smart plug. I mean, whatever you want, that's the idea. So I'm gonna build that now for you right here. So very basics again, you need alias, trigger, action, condition. So let's start with the trigger. Let's dive into the code. I'm looking at platform template, value underscore template. This time we're using is state and not is state attribute. I'm looking for the same entity ID and we're looking for the state of playing. So anytime that, that entity ID is at that state, then this will trigger. 
This could be a problem if it triggers multiple times. So be careful of what you're doing because if you were to pause the movie, start, pause, start, you might have this triggering uh, n number of times. So you need to adjust that in your own code based on your own use case. What I'm doing very simply just to show you, I'm turning on the light and I'm turning it, giving it orange and giving it 10% brightness. And now I'm gonna also go and add in the bit where I adjust the Sonos volume. Okay, so I've added in the Sonos part. So I'm setting the Sonos at a 20% uh, level volume and I'm using my media player.lounge. It's quite sim simple, straightforward. You might have noticed now at this point, I'm actually putting this uh, list, this dash, because I've got two services. I've got the, um, the one for the light bulb and the one for the volume. If you were to add more things, you will just go below and add another dash and continue. Now I'm going to add that condition. I'm looking for sunset as a condition to determine if it's night or not. And uh, it's very straightforward. It uses the entity ID, the sun, sun.sun, .sun, looking for the state below horizon. And basically you put that in there and it's, it's done. So now this will only work at nighttime. Now you can create a similar one if you want to do something for daytime, uh, a different set of lights level or, or maybe no lights. Um, it's not really up to you. So this one's gonna work for uh, nighttime. One thing we can do now is, is actually disable the automation so that it doesn't trigger again for a second time. So this will help you when you're doing your pausing, if you're pausing and restarting again. So now let's go into the developer tool to find out the actual automation name. So if you search for, for example, watching in my example, and I've got watching Plex on the TV at night time. That's going to be my entity ID that I need to use. So get that name. It's easy if you can just copy and paste it. Go back into your automations. So add these two lines of code here. Service home assistant dot turn underscore off. And then automation dot watching Plex on the TV at night. So what this do is it will turn the automation off whenever it triggers for the first time. And what we want to do, we want to create another file that actually is going to turn it on in the, in the morning maybe. So it will work only once a day. If you want to find out how to build your own Plex Media Server, then follow the link down below and go to my website, check out the ripping service. If I'm giving you cool tips that you find interesting and you're getting value out of this video, then please consider subscribing to the channel. I'm trying to hit 500 subscribers by the end of the month. So the last automation for today is gonna to allow us to check if our kids are actually sleeping or they're watching Plex while they should be sleeping, all right? So let's get this sorted now. So it's exactly the same trigger state as the state before. So the media player is playing. It's on playing on their device. So you're probably gonna have multiple devices. I'm only using one just to keep it simple for me to test it all. Action. We want a nice notification to come to us. And it's gonna be very similar to the first one we saw. Your kids are watching and we've got the actual title and I've added in after the bedtime, what shall I do? The main difference here is the condition. The condition will look at a specific time and specific day. And here I'm looking at, uh, for example, after 9.30 p.m. And before 6 a.m., so that's sort of a time where we want no screen time. Um, we've got certain days, so I've specified Monday to Thursday. So let's say Friday is a day that we might allow that because Saturday there's no school. So you can sort of tweak this uh, the way you want, but this doesn't really give you much um, power, right? Why, what about if we added a button and when you get notified that actually tells you, turn it off. Let's do that now. So we just received a notification and I want to add a button to it to actually turn off Plex from our mobile phone directly without even getting up from the sofa. In your configurations.yaml file, um, I need to add in Plex. So I'm calling this Plex and I'm calling this turn off underscore Plex. So you just feel free to copy and paste this code and I'll link, leave links down in the description. These are actionable notifications and they're slightly different nuances depending if you're using iOS or if you're using Android. So I'm using iOS. So this code will work with iOS for sure. But you know, you could just slightly tweak it for Android. So a few things to point out. Uh, the identifier, which is very important, which uh, you need to exactly get it right when you create your automations. And the, the server identifier, 
uh, Plex. So there's two things we need to have a look at. And once this is done, save and restart a uh, has. Then let's move on to um, the automation file now. In our Plex underscore bedtime.yaml file, we need to add a few lines of code. But be careful with the, how it, you're indenting this whole thing because you will get an error message if you don't follow this carefully. But data, then push, then categories. Remember space and then always two. Uh, so enter and then two spaces. So you have it like this. And category, I'm using Plex. That's the first identifier I showed you. And that's how I'm calling it. This will actually give us that button to press. Next thing to do is, is what actually happens when you do press that button. And let's have a look at that now. So let's create a new automation file. This is going to be quite straightforward. Again, this is going to be specific for iOS because I'm using an event type iOS.notification underscore action underscore fired. So the action name is tan underscore off plex, all uppercase in my example. You can change that to whatever you want to, but you will change any configuration file.yaml. Then I want to notify, and I'm going to notify, and in my example, I'm notifying my own mobile phone, but if, you, if your kid had a device, you would notify their device and basically send them a little message with go to bed, right? So we're making it quite clear. And if in case you don't really don't trust them, you can also use the media underscore player media stop. And if you point it to the right Plex media server, that will absolutely just stop the whole uh, playing. He will just kill it. So that's sort of uh, a, a proper way of saying, yeah, go to bed now, right? Uh, you could go a bit more extreme, like uh, cutting off the Wi-Fi. Uh, removing access to wife the actual whole device and shut it all down completely but you know I leave that to you but this is just for Plex this video to actually showcase what you can do by integrating Plex into Home Assistant. So if you enjoyed this video I know you're going to enjoy the next video five automation tips for device tracking in Home Assistant I'm going to link that right here because you're subscribing and liking and comment down below see you in the next video if you're quite intrigued by Home Assistant and you know it's the first time you see it, I'm gonna leave a video down in the description below. You can actually get up and started. It costs very little and all of this software is open source anyway.